Praise the Lord, everybody. Praise the Lord, everybody. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you so much for logging in. Um, if you could, as it is our custom, begin to share, um, begin to invite someone. I'm asking right now that you start to invite couples. Start to invite couples. Start to invite couples. Invite uh, individuals that you know that are married, that are engaged, that are in significant relationships. I'm asking that you invite someone today. Um, today, we are going to be uh, still preaching the gospel, but coming a little bit different, coming a little bit different. We're going to be firstly having a sermon duet, but we're going to be dealing with marital agreement, marital agreement. So I'm asking right now, let's begin to share. Let's begin to let someone know that we're on. If you're on Zoom, invite someone. If you're on Facebook, invite someone. Let them know that we're on, share. Let's see the numbers get up. Um, I'm believing God is going to do something in regarding, uh, as it is regarding couples and relationships, as it is regarding couples and relationships. Before we get started, and as you are inviting, we're going to worship just for a moment. We're going to begin to give God praise and give him honor. And I'm just asking that you would invite and you would join in the worship. And then we're going to dive into our word. Come on, just begin to honor him. Just begin to magnify him. Come on, begin to bless him. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Come on, begin to bless him. Come on, I want you to honor God. I want you to magnify him. I want you to give him glory. I want you to give him honor. We give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise, oh God. Hallelujah. We reverence you. We magnify you. Come on, I want you to begin to think of how good he is. I want you to begin to think of how great he is. I want you to begin to just love on him and magnify him. Come on, he's worthy. He's worthy to be magnified. He's worthy to be adored. Come on, I will bless the Lord at all times and his praises shall continually be in my mouth. Come on, my soul shall make his boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Come on, oh magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name together. Come on, that's a good place to worship right there. Hey, that's a good place to release a shout unto God right there. That's a good place to release a sound unto your king. A sound unto your master. Come on, I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord. Now right there, just begin to bless him and make a sound. Come on, come on. Open your mouth and give him glory. Open your mouth and give him praise. Come on, he's been better to me than I've been to myself. Come on. If it had not been for the Lord who was on my side. Come on, who says, where would I be? Where would I be? Where would I be? Hallelujah. The Lord's been good to me. The Lord's been kind to my family. The Lord's peace has shined upon me. Come on, and I will bless him. I will not be silent. I will not be silent. But I will release a sound unto God. We bless his name. Hallelujah. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Glory be unto God. Glory be unto God. Hallelujah. 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 Once again, we welcome you. We welcome you. We welcome you to our broadcast on today. Once again, um, I want you to begin to share. I want you to invite. Let someone know that we are on. Um, if you know anyone that's married, if you know anyone that's engaged, if you know anyone that's in a significant relationship, I'm asking that you invite, that you invite. I just believe God's going to do something as it is regarding relationships and with couples tonight. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We bless God. Well, I have um, the privilege um, tonight to start our, our sermon series for the whole month of November 
um, entitled Sermon Duets, and I'm kicking it off tonight with my own wife, um, my boo, my girl, um, my wife, none other than Minister Camilla Williams. Come on, let me see some hearts there. Let me see some hearts there for my wife. Let me see some hearts and some likes. Let me see that. Let me see that. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Um, we're going to get started. I'm not going to prolong the time tonight. Um, you have anything you want to say, babe? No, let's get started. Let's get started. She told me I'm on a time, I'm on a time limit. I'm on a time limit. So, you know, last week I got y'all. Y'all had early church last week. So uh, we're going to see if we can have some more early church. We're going to see if we can have some more early church. Um, we want to deal uh, with the topic of the power of agreement. And we are really um, going to hone in as it is regarding marital agreement. As it is regarding marital agreement or having agreement within significant relationships. So as I said, if you're a couple, if you're in a significant relationship, if you're engaged, if you're married, I want, I want, I want you here tonight. I want you here tonight. Um, we're going to deal with some couples in the Bible and we're going to extract some principles um, and we're going to just talk on tonight. We're going to talk on tonight. Um, I want you to turn your Bibles to Matthew. Turn your Bibles to Matthew. And then I also want you to get ready to also turn them to Luke as well. But turn your Bibles to Matthew, the first chapter. The first chapter. And I'm going to read for your hearing the 18th to the 20th verse. And the Bible reads, Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example, was minded to put her away privately. But while he thought on these things, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, saying, Joseph, thou son of David, fear not to take unto thee Mary for thy wife, for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. In Luke 1, 18 through 20 reads, Zechariah asked the angel, How can I be sure of this? I am an old man, and my wife is well along in years. The angel said to him, I am Gabriel. I stand in the presence of God, and I have been sent to speak to you and tell you this good news. And now you will be silent and not able to speak until the day this happens, because you did not believe my words, which will come true at their appointed time. Amen. The word of the Lord has already blessed. Father God, we thank you. We thank you for this moment. We thank you for this opportunity. We thank you, oh God, for this unity that we feel even in the atmosphere tonight. Father, I'm asking God that you would word our mouths, oh God, that you would cause us to speak with power and authority and clarity. I'm praying, oh God, that couples, oh God, on tonight would be delivered, that strongholds would be broken, oh God, that unity would come back in relationships. Father, I'm praying, oh God, that you would use my wife and I, Father, to deliver a word, oh God, that would literally shift the, the trajectory of somebody's marriage. Now, Father, hide us behind the cross. I pray, God, that you get all of the glory. Word our mouth. In Jesus' name we pray. Name. Amen. 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 I want you to put on the board right before we get started the power of agreement come on let me see you put that on the board the power of agreement the power of agreement the power of agreement let me see you put that on the board the power of agreement if you're on zoom let me see it if you're on facebook let me see it the power of agreement hallelujah hallelujah so 
I want, I want to start this, I want to start off in the text, but as I start off in the text, I really want to just kind of dialogue a little bit because there's some meat as we, as we were studying and as we were kind of going over something, there's some meat within this text. There's, there's some meat really within both of these stories as well as within both of these marriages that really parallel together. Um, let, let, let me kind of set the stage and let me set the, sting, the scene. Um, I'm going to start off in Matthew. Um, here we see in Matthew, we see Joseph, we see Mary has, um, of course, received the word from the angel of the Lord and stated that the Holy Ghost was going to, of course, impregnate her. Mm -hmm. So we see now that her husband has never touched her. Her husband has never uh, laid down with her. Her husband has not gotten the goods. But yet the Spirit of God literally um, comes in and kind of uh, uh, hijacks uh, the, in the most intimate part of a relationship. Mm -hmm. and, and here we see that, that as this happens, we see that Mary is, of course, impregnated by the Spirit of God. And Joseph is looking at Mary like, 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 come on, what's up? <laughs> Joseph yes. is looking at Mary like, who you been with? Because you sure enough have not been with me. Come on, fellas. If you're here, just go ahead and say amen. Because I understand. I understand. I, I, I know we, we would all be like Joseph. Um, um, let, let us know that ain't nothing ever happened. Uh, we, we would be the ones. Uh, that would literally be like, come on, uh, I, I know, I know it's not mine. Uh, so here we see that we see that Joseph, he 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 has questions, he has doubt. There, there's now some disagreement within the relationship um, that that Mary and Joseph have because Joseph knows that this child is not his, right? Mm -hmm. So here we see that this happens. And Joseph, of course, is now told uh, by the angel that this is this child is of God, that Mary is telling the truth, that Mary did not uh, step out on her marriage. But yet um, it was just the fact that she is going to be used as the vessel God wants to use in order to bring his son in the earth realm. Mm -hmm. now, now, this is very important um, as it is regarding relationships. And the very first thing I thought it was good to uh, start out at, especially when you're talking about marriages, is, 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 is the foundation of a marriage. How should a marriage uh, be, what should a marriage be founded on? How should a marriage uh, come together? How should a marriage be formulated? Um, and here we see, literally within the text, we see that the scripture is showing us how that needs to be. Mm -hmm. um, we see that, that Joseph and Mary had disagreement, okay? They start out, there's some disagreement um, within the marriage, mm -hmm. um, but yet they both receive a word from the Lord yes. that then bring them back into agreement. Mm -hmm. I, 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 need, I need to state that. They both receive a word from the Lord that then bring them back into agreement, which really shows us that the relationship is not really just between two people, mm -hmm. but the relationship is really a three-way mm -hmm. because the relationship is between Joseph, is between Mary, but yet it is also between the Holy Ghost. Can I tell you that if you are going to be in godly agreement, and if you are going to be in a godly relationship, your marriage, watch this, ought to be a replica of the Godhead. Your marriage ought to be a replica of the Godhead. What is the Godhead? Father, he's, he's got the Father, got the Son, God, the Holy Spirit. So literally, your marriage is a three-way. The Bible declares that a threefold cord in, I believe that's Ecclesiastes uh, 4 and 12, a threefold cord is not easily broken. And, and, I, and I'm believing that a lot of our marriages and a lot of relationships break off because God is not in the center of it. A lot of our relationships kind of are a little faulty because 
God is not in the center of it. But here in the text, we see that although doubt and although the enemy literally had an entry point to jump in and literally cause uh, uh, Joseph to make a turn, we see here that the spirit of God was able to then bring together unity. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And because of that relationship, because they both had a relationship with God, because they could both hear a word from the Lord, the word that they had was separate. Mary got a word that she was going to conceive a child. And then later, Joseph got a word that although it wasn't his child, it was a child of God. So their relationship with God is what brought them back together into mm -hmm. agreement. If both of them didn't have a relationship, that threefold court would not have been together. That threefold court would not have brought them back into unity, brought them back into agreement. But that word from the Lord, that relationship from the Lord, the fact that God was the center of their lives. So in their relationship, he automatically became the center of the relationship. Mm -hmm. And that agreement, that word from the Lord brought them back together in a place where Joseph could have forfeited the promise. Joseph could have sent Mary into her death. Joseph could have killed the seed. Um, and we all know, you know, how, uh, how that would have changed the dynamic of the entire story. Mm -hmm. But um, Joseph would have had the right to do it. Joseph would have had every legal right to do it. However, the word from the Lord brought him back into agreement for his marriage. And, and I, I think I think another thing is if, if we look at the scripture, do you notice that they both got the same word? Mm -hmm. that, that, that there wasn't one person that got some word all the way over here mm -hmm. and then the other one got a word that was already over that was all the way left. Yeah. They, they both received an agreeable word. They both received a word that was similar to each other. They both received the same word. Um, and oftentimes in relationships, we, we, we will see that one person has one idea. The other person has a whole nother idea. One person has one agenda. The other person has a whole other agenda. But yet, if God is never your source, if God is never your, your, your sounding board, if God is never your final authority, you'll notice that there will, there will 100% be disagreements in relationship. And there will 100% be, be uh, times in relationships where um, it's, it's going to be a strain because you, you, you'll, you'll, you'll have uh, parts of the relationship or parts um, um, within, within the agreement that want to go one way and want to go the other way. Mm -hmm. But yet if God remains the centerpiece, um, there should always be what I would call an agreeable moment mm -hmm. uh, where, where, where even if we are agreeing, I'm not even going to say agreeing to disagree, we're agreeing to believe God for this. Amen. We're, yes. we're agreeing to believe uh, a God for this relationship. Now, now you, you kind of brought something um, out while you were talking, and I, and I want to deal with that a little bit more. Um, you talked about the fact, because keep in mind, in the meantime, between Joseph receiving this word from the Lord, um, in the meantime of Joseph receiving the instruction from the angel, what happens? The Bible declares that he is contemplating leaving his wife. Mm -hmm. He, he's contemplating divorcing her. He's contemplating putting her aside. He's, he's contemplating putting her out privately. Um, um, and I can only imagine in the text, you must understand, as my wife put it, um, there was legal right to do it. There was um, 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 religious right to do it. There was, um, if you were public opinion right to do it. Mm -hmm. um, so, so he's, 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 contemplating in his mind, okay, how am I going to let her go? Um, because he's like, I don't, I don't really want any parts of this. Um, now, now, I really want to look at this a little bit different because I think like most of us, when we get in relationships or when we're in relationships and there are moments where we button heads, we're, we're just totally in total disagreement and in total disarray. Um, and you must understand that I don't care if you're on the left. I don't care if you're on the right. I want everybody to put this on the board. Everybody wants agreement. Put, put that on the board. Everybody wants agreement. Yeah. I, I don't care who you are in the relationship. Everybody wants agreement. 
Let, let me prove it to you even in the text. Put that on the board. Everybody wants agreement. Whether you're wrong, whether you're right, right yeah. wh whether you're in the middle, everybody wants agreement. And this is really the power of agreement mm -hmm. because oftentimes if you don't agree with your spouse, mm -hmm. <laughs> somebody will. That's, that's all I'm going to say. If, yeah. if, if you don't agree with your significant other, somebody will. Now, I'm not, I'm not here to say that that means you just agree and go along with anything and go along with everything. But what I am saying is the fact that you must understand that there must be a mindset to create resolve. Amen. Because if there's mm -hmm. no mindset to create resolve, think about it. All Joseph needed to do when he's thinking about divorcing his wife, mm -hmm. all he needed to do was to talk to one person that would have agreed. Absolutely. All Joseph needed was to talk to one person that would have said, you know what? She crazy. Yeah. You know that child ain't yours. Mm -hmm. Sure, the, ho the Holy Ghost impregnated her. Yeah. She, li she a lying wonder. That's uh -huh. what she is. You know. Let, let, let's go to Jerry Springer. Let's 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 call Mari. Let, let's see what's really going on. That, everybody wants agreement. So so what we see is Joseph, he reserves the right for other people's opinion. Mm -hmm. He reserves the right for even his 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 pastor's opinion, mm -hmm. because understand, even if he would have went to the priest. Even if he would have went to the priest, the priest would have told him, you have every right to let her go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Because God was doing something fresh. God was doing yeah. something new. Mm -hmm. that, that, that means nobody, even the priest didn't have the revelation of the way Jesus was about to come. Okay. Although there was prophecy, although it was written, no one had the revelation of the way Jesus was going to come. Mm -hmm. so, 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 so the reality of the matter is, with, with all of that being said, um, um, all he needed was one person to agree. But he reserved that right and he kept it private. Yeah. He kept it to himself. And how many times do we open the door for other people's opinions to then come into the secret place and the private places of our uh, union or, or your relationship or your marriage and then people will start to change the atmosphere uh, uh, in your own house yeah. because they got an opinion. Mm -hmm. And sometimes it might even be a sound opinion. Sometimes it might sound really good. Sometimes it might come with, you know, people who love you and care about you and who are coming with what they think is great advice and good advice. But what we have to remember, when God is centered in your marriage, the plans and the purpose that God has for your marriage, outsiders can't fathom it. Outsiders' so small and simple thoughts can't line up with the will of God for your marriage, can't line up with the agreement for your marriage. There's no possible way for them to imagine the things that God has for your union, mm -hmm. because if other people were able to imagine it, there would be no need for God. God brought us together for a purpose. So people can't fathom that purpose. People can't speak that purpose. Only we can through what God has put in our spirits, through the words that God has, you know, prayed over us, prophesied over us, spoken to us personally about our union, about our marriage. So even when people have the best intentions, even when they love and care about us, you just got to be careful what you then bring back into your agreement, what you then bring back into your assignment. Yeah, you, you, you'll, you'll, end up, you'll end up going back home and trying stuff. Ain't gonna work. <laughs> Come on, if I got a witness right there, you 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 ever be out with the with, with the fellas and they and, and 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 you know they just give you that little bit of advice. Well, go home and you know put your foot down today. You know, <laughs> you know you go home and that's totally not your character. Or that might not be the way you deal with a thing. And you and you go home and you start trying to be like somebody else's husband. Mm -hmm. Come on, yeah. like somebody else's boyfriend, like yeah. somebody else's girlfriend, and you start trying stuff that literally breaks the agreement within your marriage. It don't line up. She looking at, or, or your relationship, she, they, folk is looking at you like, who, who, who is this? Mm -hmm. who, who is this? Yeah. And, and, and I'm telling you, people will do that. Advice will do that. Opinions will do that. And this is why your marriage or your relationship must be centered with God in the middle of it. God Amen. must be the head of your relationship That's because okay. people will have you going all type of ways. Yes. People will have you trying all type of things and understand that nobody's relationship is the same. Mm -hmm. 
Nobody's relationship is going to work the same. Yes. You'll have some people that, that is, is okay with doing one thing and it works with them where another relationship, like I, like I can say for us, we don't argue much mm -hmm. because we... I, I can't I can't handle an arguing woman. I'm just I'm just gonna be, <laughs> just gonna be I can't I can't I can't do that too much. I can't now that's me. But you have other relationships that you know that's how they deal with things. And I'm not trying to say that that's right or nor that's wrong. All I'm trying to say is every relationship is different, and we and we have to be careful with with allowing people to start to influence us, especially within the private parts, in the intimate parts, yes. in the secret parts of our relationship. Amen. I'm telling you, they'll jack you up, fellas. They'll <laughs> they'll jack you up, ladies. Don't be trying nothing, and you don't know if 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 if, if that is within the covenant mm -hmm. of your union. Yeah. That's true. And then I had brought up Luke earlier, and that um, kind of brings us to this point, is that when a, a different way that it was dealt with in the Bible, when it's talking about relationships and talking about agreement with God, before mm -hmm. um, they talked about Mary and Joseph, they talked about Zechariah and Elizabeth. And, and the word talked about how that God gave Zechariah a word about them bearing a child. We, we know the story. We know that that was John the Baptist and that he was coming before Christ, that he was coming with a purpose to deliver the good news of the risen Savior. Mm -hmm. And in that story, Zechariah didn't quite handle it like Joseph did. Mm -hmm. You know, he, he went back and forth with the angel about his word. He said, my wife is old. You know, I'm old. She's been barren all this time. And he wanted he really asked the angel, how you think you're going to do this? You know, tell me how it's going to happen. Like, show me the how priest, it's going to happen. Yes, the priest, the preacher. He <laughs> didn't believe. He doubted himself. And because of his doubt, the word says that the angel said, well, I'm going to do it. It's going to be done. But until then, I'm going to shut your mouth. And it, it, the revelation came to me that when God is doing something in you, in your marriage, in, in the agreement, whatever it is, mm -hmm. that sometimes God has to shut down things. Sometimes God has to shut our own mouths because we begin to speak against the blessings and the promises that God has for us. He had to shut Zachariah's mouth because God had a plan and a purpose that was already laid out that no one else could fathom. And even the priest who was handpicked to go in and get his word, he didn't even realize that, you know, he was picked by a lot but there's no lot with God mm -hmm. there's no there's no by chance there's no luck God had a plan and purpose so he planned for Zachariah to go into that um that um sanctuary that day prior to him even being born God already knew this day was going to happen so there's no chance in your word there's no chance in your miracle and sometimes God's like okay I set this all up and now you're going to speak against what I set up so Come now on. I'm going to just shut you up because you can't go into your home and speak against the promises of God for your marriage. Come on preach. Zachariah could have went home and spoke barrenness right back into Elizabeth you know he could have went home and spoke the miracle right out of their home because he wanted to know how what where and when we're not always going to know that so sometimes when you have your quiet season when God shuts your mouth in and outside of your home just know it might be for a purpose and for a plan now I'm I'm I'm, I'm going to I'm I'm, I'm, I'm going to jump on that because let, let, let's let's look at that again so so we see here that the priests because I'm still on that right mm -hmm. there the preacher did not have the faith when he's talking to an angel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He, he, he's having a one-on-one -on -one dialogue with an angel. He's the only one that's in the holy of holy, the very secret place. Mm -hmm. And he cannot believe what yeah. the angel is telling him. And here we see that in this case, his wife's faith was stronger than his faith. Mm -hmm. Now this this is key. This is key because what happens when you're in a relationship 
and one person's faith is stronger than the other person's faith. Mm -hmm. What what happens when you're in a relationship and your faiths aren't aligned? Your 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 passions aren't aligned. Your 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 drive isn't aligned. Mm -hmm. You you'll end up seeing that one person may be stronger than the other. Now, that's not the issue, but the text is showing us something here that whenever your faith does not align, right? Whenever your your drive and your passions do not align. What, what the text is showing us is mature faith. Uh, although Zechariah had to be forced to do this, it's still a principle that when you are really mature in a relationship, there will be times where your faith is not aligning with is not aligning with your spouse or your significant other, and somebody in the relationship has to be strong enough to say, I'ma shut up. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I'm, 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 I'm going to shut up. I'm not going to speak against what yeah. God is trying to do in my relationship. I'm Absolutely. not going to speak against how God is trying to move in my marriage or mm -hmm. in my, uh, uh, in my wife or in my boyfriend or in my girlfriend. I, I, it, it does not matter. The principle remi remains the same. Every now and again, you have to become mature enough in your relationship to know when to shut up. Amen. And, and, and the reason and the reason that is is because you must understand that J how John the Baptist was going to be the forerunner for Jesus Christ. That means there would be no Jesus if there was no John mm -hmm. because somebody had to prepare the way. That's why the Bible declares that the greatest prophet was John mm -hmm. because John was the one that was going to prepare the way. So literally, if the Holy Spirit or the angel would have allowed Zechariah uh, to keep his mouth open, mm -hmm. you, you know how it is. God will tell you certain things and when you sit on that thing. And when you start thinking about that thing yeah. and you start remembering or, 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 or understanding the fact that oh, this don't quite look like mm -hmm. I, I, I don't I don't know how this is going to work. Mm -hmm. You'll go and you'll start talking your spouse out of a thing, your partner out. out of a thing. Mm -hmm. Y'all sitting there trying to make plans. Y'all sitting there <laughs> trying to try, trying to figure stuff out and everybody's off. And, and, and you must understand because Elizabeth had the greater faith, it's not now the responsibility of somebody in the relationship that even when I don't understand Absolutely. come on come on yeah. even when it don't make sense mm -hmm. even when when I don't comprehend the spiritual significance yes. of it all the reality of the matter is I'm gonna shut up because I'm not going to speak against the CEO that's trying to arise I'm not going to speak against the business owner that's in you I'm not going to yes. speak against the ministry starter that's in you I'm I'm not going to speak against the father in you or the mother in you. Mm -hmm. And you got so many people that because they don't understand and because they can't comprehend, they don't shut up and then they start talking too much. And now don't nobody have faith. Amen. Now, here's the thing. If we don't, if don't none of us have faith, how in the world are we going to expect the manifestation of God? Amen. No, no, y'all don't like that. Good. I feel a praise break right there. I said, if you don't have faith, how can you understand or how can you expect the manifestation of God? But I want to speak to some men out there. I want to speak to some women out there that may be in a situation where the Lord is saying, shut up. I, I, I know you don't like it, but the Lord is saying, huh? Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. I need you to receive this word. I need some people out there you might have to hush. You might have to shut your mouth because what God is trying to do in your marriage, come on, what God is trying to do in your family, what God is trying to do in your ministry, you don't want to talk again. The mirror, I wish I had a church. I wish I had somebody that said, I will not release a sound that is contrary to what God wants to do. Come on, release a worship right there. Hallelujah. If you understand that there's some battles that's about to be won, hey, Hallelujah. because you shut your mouth. Yes. Hallelujah. My God. Thank my God. you, hey. God. Glory my to your name, God. My God. My God. My God. My God. I think this right here is a, a us right here is a perfect example of that word. 
you know, in, in real life situations, when, when we got married and everyone already knew you were called to preach, you were called to prophesy, you were already working in the ministry. And I got on the scene and I said, I am his wife and that's all I am. Don't ask me to do that. Don't ask me to do this. You sure he is did. the preacher. But after a while, I, after a <laughs> while, I had to let that go and I had to settle in that thing because I had to realize, well, you know, I am his wife and we are one. So after a while, God is going to line some things up. Yes. He's going to, he's going to, he had a purpose and a plan. So I had to stop speaking against that word that I was going to be with you in this thing, that I was going to be with you in this ministry because ultimately God didn't just have a ministry for you. He had a ministry for our union. He had a ministry for our marriage. Yes. He had a ministry for our agreement. And today, the fact that we are are here today when you know seven years ago I said I would never is a sign of that agreement is a sign of manifestation yes. of me shutting my mouth in certain situations like I'm gonna stop speaking against the word of the Lord for our marriage I'm gonna stop speaking against that we have a kingdom purpose together as one for our marriage and I think what you were saying was so awesome and and this right here is a prime example of that mm -hmm. And, and, and it, it, can, can we just be real for a moment? Come on, don't. Once again, put this on the board because I feel it. Everybody wants agreement. Your, your, your husband or your wife or your significant other does not need you pulling them down every time they got an idea. Mm -hmm. Every time God is putting something in their spirit, every time God is trying to do something through them, every time they are inspired by a thing and, 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 and you come and you're the negative Nancy and you're, 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 you're always fighting against the purpose. You know, you, you know what you end up doing? You end up sucking the life out of your significant other. You cause them not to even want to come to you no more. Mm -hmm. You cause them not to even want to discuss stuff with you no more. You cause them uh, uh, to, to you, or you cause the door to now be open. Well, once again, if you don't agree, mm -hmm. if, if you're not at least willing to have a conversation, if you're not at least willing to, 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 to see both sides of things, mm -hmm. you must understand somebody is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And all they need is one person. I'm trying to help you. Yeah. All your all your husband or all your wife needs is one person to say, that's a good idea. Mm -hmm. you, be you better understand. It's just like with your children. If you got one person that's willing to inspire your children in one area and you're silent over their life in the other, you better believe they're going to go with the person that can agree. Y'all not yeah. saying nothing. Yeah, they're yeah. going to go with the person that, that, that starts to speak to that. That inner desire on them. You got to understand that that oftentimes, especially when it's a godly agreement, oftentimes it's not it, 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 it's not it's not like we just coming with with, with ideas. Uh -huh. It's literally God is inspiring something. God is birthing something on the inside of us that we can't contain. Absolutely. Can, can I can I suggest that maybe your husband, that maybe your wife can't contain what's going on on the inside of them? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And maybe you can't understand the plans of God Come on. quite yet. Maybe you didn't, you haven't fathomed or you're not at the level where you know what God is doing in your life. So before you start speaking against it, maybe start seeking God for what he's trying to do on the inside of your partner. Yes. Start getting a relationship with God so that you know when God speaks to them, God is going to come back to you too. God is going to bring that agreement to you. God is going to line it up. Why? Because God is never going to cause chaos in your marriage. So if it's a word from the Lord, if it's a word for your agreement, then it is going to line up even in spite of us not understanding it all, not knowing it all, not seeing it all. God is eventually going to line that thing up. It's already lined up. Matter of fact, we just don't have the understanding yet. Yes. We just don't have the capacity to see it because he can't give it all to us at one time. Because if I knew that marrying him was somehow going to make me be a preacher, I might have said, 
never mind a long time ago. You know, I'm gonna, that's too much. That's too much. But God knew he had to give me baby steps. God knew he had to do little by little by little because God knew what my capacity was, what yes. my level was. You know, if I was here and he was there, then God knew he had to inch me up. He couldn't give it to me all at one time. So in spite of our own doubt, our own understanding, we have to be careful that we're not shutting off, cutting off, you know, killing the seed that God is trying to flourish in our marriage, you know, breaking off the seed that God is trying to just water a little bit at a time. Yeah. We got to be careful that we're not cutting it off, that we're not killing it in the process because of our own fear, our own doubts, our own unbelief, and honestly, our own immaturity in the spirit, our own immaturity of our agreement. Yes. You know, we have not come to the level where we can line up with agreement. So just be careful when you're speaking against your spouse because you're ultimately speaking against your agreement. You're speaking against your union. You're speaking against yourself. No matter who is to, no matter how close you are, no matter what it's about, be careful who you speak against, especially in your marriage, especially about your agreement because that can cause fatal things to happen. God shut his mouth the entire pregnancy. You know, that was very, I'm sure that was very traumatic for Zachariah, all because of his disbelief. And God said, this is too important for you to mess up. Yes. That, 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 that put that on the board. It's too important for you to mess up. That, that, that's, yeah. that's powerful because how, how, oft, how many times do we do that? We start messing stuff up because we start talking too much. Yes. <laughs> we start messing stuff up because we start running our mouth. And, 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 and sometimes, sometimes it's not even running your mouth in a bad way. Sometimes yeah. you could be in so much agreement that you try to hijack the plan of God. You, 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 yeah. you, pull, a, you pull a Sarah where, where, well, well, maybe God meant go get Hagar. Maybe, <laughs> may, yes. maybe yeah. God meant this and may, maybe God meant that. And, it, and it's kind of like, no, God meant what he, he said. said. But yes. you said something. I want you to push right there. And I feel a preach right Right there because you said that God had to increase your cap your capacity and your level to be able to handle the assignment on the marriage. I want to preach right there because God's about to increase somebody's capacity yes. to be able to handle the assignment on your relationship. Go ahead, Absolutely. go ahead, talk to him yeah, right there. God can caprice, uh, increase the capacity on your relationship because we have to get ready. We have to line up with the word of God for our relationship. We have to line up with the word of God for our marriage. You have to tap into that thing. I had to do some work to be able to tap into the agreement of my marriage. When I said I do, I wasn't at the level to accept this. I wasn't at the level to accept that I am married to someone where God has great things in store for them, where God has a purpose and a plan to build his kingdom through my spouse. God cannot build it. Well, I won't say he can't, but God is not going to build the kingdom through one spouse. And then the other spouse is just pulling and yanking and pulling them down and making it harder and making it more costly for that person to live out and fulfill what they are called to do. If God called you together, then that means he called your walk together. Yes. He called your agreement together. He called your union together. He called your call together. So what he called one spouse to do, you might not do it the way they do it. I'm never going to run and scream and jump and cartwheel like my husband does, but that doesn't mean that he hasn't called me to preach the word. And that doesn't mean that he hasn't placed a ministry in me that lines up with him, that comes into agreement with him, that doesn't fight and push and pull against what he had to do. So I had to do some soul searching. Mm -hmm. I had to do some prayer and some meditation by myself so I could line up as a wife so that I was in a agreement and not disagreement and not speaking against the purpose and the call and the plan for his life. Because what I wanted is not more important than what God has called us to do. What I felt comfortable with was not greater than the purpose for our union. What I was okay with and what I wasn't fearful about was not good enough for what God had put us together to do. There was kingdom work in the union. There's kingdom
kingdom work for your union. There's kingdom work for your agreement. So what your wants and likes and issues are doesn't override that. It's not more important than what God has called you to do. God gave them a word. So what Zachariah wanted, what Joseph wanted, it wasn't more important than the seed. It, what, it couldn't have been more important than John. And it definitely wasn't more important than Jesus. So they had to put that thing down and get in line with what God wanted because the, I couldn't have imagined what the plan and purpose for our marriage was in 2013. I had no idea, but mm -hmm. eventually I either had to put up or shut up because you cannot keep coming in, you know, and, and tangling in with God, with God has called for your union. It's never going to work out. It's always going to cause confusion and chaos because if we're pushing against the will of God, we're never going to win. I want y'all to put that on the board, put up or shut up. It's time to put up or shut up. You either going to do something to push your spouse, to push your yes. marriage, to push what God is trying to do, or you're going to have to shut it down. You're going to have to shut up. As a matter of fact, I feel a praise right there yes, because God. God's about to do something in somebody's relationship yes, God. that is too big for you to mess up. And maybe the greatest miracle in yes, your relationship God. is that God is saying, shut your Yes, have your way, Lord. Come on, Hallelujah. what God want to yes. do through your marriage. Yes, God. What God want to do through your relationship. Yes, God. What God want to do in your house. Have I your feel way, that. Lord. Have your way, Lord. It's bigger than your inconsistency. Yes, God. It's bigger than you not understanding. It's, 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 it's bigger than you not knowing what to do. Yes. If you don't know what to do, shut your mouth. Yes. If you don't know what to say, shut your mouth. Amen. Because there's somebody's faith that's strong enough to pull the weight yes, until it's time for you to speak. Come on. I said there's somebody's faith that's strong enough yes, to pull the weight. Amen. My God. Hallelujah. My God. Yes, my, God. God. my God. My God. My God. <laughs> Y'all missed yes, that. I God. said there's Hallelujah. somebody's faith that's strong enough to pull the weight. Yes. I, I, I'm only yes. talking to weight pullers right now. Come on. And this is not to degrade anybody else in the relationship. Yes, but every now and again, the weight puller needs to be encouraged. The weight puller needs to understand. I said open your mouth and give God praise. Because there is a grace Hallelujah. that's falling down yes. on weight pullers. There yes, is an anointing God. that's falling down on weight pullers. Yes, People that's having to take on the financial load. People that's having to take on the responsibilities of the house. People that's having to take yes, on the parental load. I come to prophesy that there is an anointing. Yes, come God. on, don't you open your mouth against your spouse. Don't you talk to him like he's a dog. Don't you speak to her and degrade yes, her. God. The devil is a liar. God's getting ready to do something that you can't allow your yes, mouth God. to mess up. Hallelujah. Yo, come on, so Yes, God. Hallelujah. You know, hey. Yes, God. My God. Hallelujah. Yo, oh, my God. Glory to your name, God. If people, you know, I'm, I'm convinced. I'm, yes, yes. I'm, I'm, I'm convinced that if people only understood that it's God that put relationships together it's mm -hmm. it's it's God that has ordained a marriage yes. and if people only understood that look it's a God thing mm -hmm. you know we we wouldn't argue over all of the little yes. details if we just understood it's a God thing mm -hmm. I, 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 don't, I don't know why this is happening like this I don't understand why this is happening like this but what I do know is I know I'm supposed to be with you mm -hmm. come on Come on, what, what, I, what, I, what, what I do know is I know that I'm supposed to start this ministry or I know that you're supposed to apply for that job or I know that you're supposed to start that business or I know that we're supposed to do it together. If we could just get to the point where we understand that there are some God things, that there are some God ordained things in your relationship, Amen. you wouldn't wrestle over all the details. So what you don't understand? Mm -hmm. So what this is, this is project 150. 
Yes. Come on. <laughs> Come on, because I'm a project man. My wife will tell you, I, 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 I've, I've done them all. I've done pyramid schemes. I've, I, got, I got licenses. I've tried jobs. It, 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 it doesn't matter. But, but the reality of the matter is, if she would have given up on me, y'all not saying nothing to me here. If on, she would have spoke against me when I was just trying to make it work for my family, she could have she, she could have shot something that God was trying to do through me that was really taking me and pushing me to prosperity um, in God. But yet she understood I got to keep speaking life. And if, even when she there were times I know. Let me let me just speak for real. There were times I know. That my wife was frustrated. <laughs> she was like, if he applied for another job, it's 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 going to be it's it's going to be some problem. Because I, and I'm and I'm going to be kind of transparent, and I'm not going to be too transparent, but I'm going to be kind of transparent. There were people that 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 really, when we first got married, because. I, I was kind of struggling financially in the job area. There were people that were against that they, they were against this. And 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 you know, there, there's no issues or anything, but there were people that were against it. And and if you know, you know, it's one thing in a marriage when when people are against it and they're telling you everything um, which you need to watch out for, mm -hmm. and then you start to see some of the things that they was telling you to watch out for, and you start to see some <laughs> tantrum like now they say he, well they, they said that this, well they said, let me just, let me, it can be defeating in a relationship, I'm just being honest, it can be very defeating when it looks like your spouse or your partner is starting to live up to what everybody said. Wow. But see, it's in those moments that they don't need somebody that's going to continue to prophesy that negativity over them. They need somebody that's going to literally come into agreement and say, no, I know what they said, mm -hmm. but this is what I believe God said. Come on. Yeah, yeah. I know what they said, but this is what I believe God is going to do. I'm telling you, you can kill what God is trying to do in your mm. relationship. You can cause your spouse, you can cause your partner to abort what God wants them to produce all because of your mouth. Amen. Amen. And when you when your faith is real and when your faith is true and when you really have faith in God and not the person, sometimes you can do some things. You have to do some things without seeing the result. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to do some things without having all the answers. I'll be transparent in this. I watched a mother who was a praying woman and she I'll say this she was more saved than my dad that my dad was <laughs> and he'll even tell you himself she was praying she was going to church she was doing everything that she could do and even as a kid I said this don't line up this don't add up but she kept doing it without complaining without wavering without letting it go and guess what she had to leave this earth without seeing some of those things come to fruition mm. but when I tell you after she left this earth my dad was at a service the first one there to come receive on. the Holy Ghost like that and you can't tell me that that wasn't from the prayers and the faith of an agreement she made in her union she didn't have to see the results because she knew God had already done it. She didn't have to see the results because her faith was so great. She said, I'm not doing this for what I see, but I'm doing this because for what I know God is going to do in my marriage. I'm doing this because God might have called her into that agreement just so another soul could have got saved. Come on. Just so another man could be filled with the Holy Spirit. Her agreement could have been pray this thing down until it happens. Pray this thing down until there is salvation hit on his life and what is greater than salvation the angels rejoice when he got saved she might not have been able to see it all but that wasn't her purpose and she stayed in that purpose no matter what she saw no matter how hard it get no matter what people said about it she was steadfast in that agreement Come and on. sometimes that's what we realize we have to do even when we can't see the fruition, the purpose is not for us to see it all and to get to the, you know, the rainbow in the sky. It's not always, you know, glossy and glittery and a prize at the end of the prayer. Sometimes we really got to work through that thing. Come on. Sometimes we got to push and pray and have some real faith. Real faith is when we don't see it, when we don't hear it, when we can't feel it. But you know, God has already answered that thing. God has already worked out the agreement 
for your marriage. And you have to realize this is not just a personal satisfaction. This is a kingdom thing. Yeah. What are we doing for the kingdom? Not for me, not so I can live this big, lavish life, but so that we can pull someone else into Christ. I can't <laughs> I, I don't know what else needs to be said. So, somebody put that in there. Receive the Holy Ghost like that. Can I, can, I, can I tell you that the agreement of a sanctified woman, come on, come on, will end up causing the unsanctified man. I'm trying to help somebody. That's Bible right there. Because when Mary and Elizabeth got together, the Holy Spirit came in. Come on. Can I tell you that you're about to make a connection? Yes, God. That's about to make your belly leap. Hallelujah. Can I tell yes, you God. that you're about to come into agreement yes, with God. somebody in your life that will cause your belly to leap? I feel bellies leaping yes, because God. God's birthing. Hey, come on. 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 Hallelujah. Woo! Oh God. Hey! Yes, God. Glory to your name, now, God. Now, come on, baby. Come on. Let, 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 let's, get, let's get to that. that, that. <laughs> Woo! Oh. <laughs> I don't know where we at. <laughs> let, 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 let's get to that relational, that, that, rel, that relative portion. Um, um, let, let, let's, talk about, let's talk about Elizabeth and Mary coming into agreement. Let, mm -hmm. let, 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 let's talk about... Um, what God will send a relationship when it's when it's centered under godly agreement. Yeah, we was talking about earlier how God is not going to let other people come in and tell you about your agreement and tell you what to do and what not to do. But there are times when God is going to send you people that line up with your marriage, when God is going to send you people that he's also speaking to about a kingdom purpose. Yes. God sent Mary to Elizabeth's house. And when he sent her, John received the Holy Spirit in the womb. So he came out with the Holy Ghost because of who God sent to her, because that those agreements lined up. Those two marital agreements and those two words from the Lord came together in one place and he was able to be filled with the Holy Ghost in the womb. So don't be so worried about, oh, we're isolated. We don't have nobody that lines up with us. Let God do the work. God is going to send you somebody who is like-minded who will help build your agreement and not speak against it now I, I i can only i can only say by way of the holy spirit i just believe that there are some people that's watching us right now mm -hmm. that that are possibly in relationships and, and I, I, I even singles you there could be some singles that's watching us right now that want to get around some godly people in order to create agreement, mm -hmm. um, but but cannot find those type of individuals. And, and, and can I prophesy this, that God's about to release your Elizabeth. I, I, I don't know who yes, I'm ministering yes, yes. to, but somebody Speak needs a, uh, an Elizabeth in the Holy Ghost. Yes, somebody God. that have a kingdom agenda. Yes. Somebody that have a kingdom resolve. Somebody that have a kingdom drive. Somebody that can understand what you're going through. Yes. Somebody that can coach you through what you're going through. Somebody that can push you through what you're going through. Come on, even, even some of us fellas, we need an Elizabeth, so to speak, in the Holy Ghost. We mm -hmm. need somebody that can understand what we're going through because it's very easy to feel like in our own relationships like we're alone. Yeah. Because because think about it. These are these are two situations. Elizabeth cannot go to Zachariah because mm -hmm. he can't talk can't talk because he's in disbelief <laughs> and Mary it, it, I'm not gonna say Mary couldn't go to Joseph but evidently there was a period when Mary felt like Joseph is not going to understand what I'm going through mm -hmm. and this happens in relationships where sometimes you need a break look 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 I I, I I love to talk to you I love but 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 sometimes you need a break sometimes you need somebody in your life that 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 is unbiased mm -hmm. but yet that understands what you're going through because they're having the same 
similar experiences. And I am prophesying over this live yes, and over this Zoom that all over, Lord. that those that are watching us tonight, God's about to release your Elizabeth. Mm -hmm. God's about to release that person in the spirit that you finally feel as though you can release on, you can dump on. The Bible declares that she stayed there for a good three, three months. months. That yes. means that there was some time. That means that sometimes you need somebody in your life that ain't going to let you go quick. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> but sometimes you need people in your yeah, life that will hold you in that thing and mm -hmm. say, I'm not going nowhere until it breaks. I'm not going nowhere until you understand. I'm not going nowhere until I pray you through this. Can mm -hmm. I just witness to somebody that needs a, an Elizabeth? Can you open your mouth real quick and yes, shout God. for your Elizabeth? Shout for your God. sister in the yes. spirit. Yes. Shout for your friend God. in the spirit. Shout for your brother in the spirit. Hallelujah. Shout for that person that say, I'll cover you. Yes, Shout God. for that person that say, I'll give oh, you godly yes. advice. Shout for that person that say, I'll go into your yes, life. God. I ain't letting you go. <laughs> yes, come yes, on, yes. Jacob. I won't let go until you bless me. me. And yes. I come to tell you, God's about to send some people in your life that won't let go. God. That will help God bless you. Come yes, on. God. That will help God push you. That will help. Oh my yes, God. God. Woo! Come on, they say, yes, God. My God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And like you said, um, Mary stayed with Elizabeth until it was time for her to give birth. Mm -hmm. She stayed with her until her blessing was to come. And the thing about it is, once it was time for Elizabeth to give birth, she gave birth. And once she gave birth, then that was time for Zachariah to speak again. Come on. So God had it lined up that he had somebody there supporting and preparing and getting each other ready for these major events that were going to change the world. And then when it was time for Zachariah to speak again, God opened his mouth. But he didn't open his mouth until God told them to name the baby John. Come on. So back to people. People came in and they were like, well, no, his name should be Zachariah. Nobody in your family's name is John. You know, he should be Zachariah. Elizabeth said, no, his name is John. And guess what? They ain't pay her no mind. They looked at Zachariah and said, well, ain't his name going to be Zachariah? Zachariah still couldn't talk. He had to get something to write on. He said his name is John. And when he, when he wrote that his name was John, the Lord opened his mouth. So then he was able to praise God for what he did. He was able to praise God that what he shut his mouth for was able to be manifested once they said his name. Once she birthed out a seed, once she showed God showed them that I'm going to do this thing in this agreement, that I I am going to act out this word even when your mouth was shut even when 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 you were barren for all these years and now you're in labor and your husband can't even speak into that thing. yeah yeah however God still birthed the miracle out of this and in spite of the people saying well no his name is gonna be John no his name is gonna be Zachariah you know arguing about what God has spoke to them Z they got a, a word from an angel they had access to angels yeah. about what their child was gonna be what his name was gonna be what he was gonna do so you have to know don't let people speak and name things in your life that don't have access to your angels that have received a word from God from the Lord. God sent an angel you down on earth to give them this boy's name to speak what he was going to do for the world that was going to change the entirety of a world. But God said he spoke it to them. So people around you, they can't hear what the angel, that angel isn't their angel. That angel is an angel for your agreement, for your home, yeah. for your call, for your seed. So don't let people that don't have access to the word of God on your life, that don't have a word from the angels that spoke to you clearly, rename your child, rename your seed, rename your destiny. Don't let it happen. They don't have access. Not only did they not have access, but I, 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 I want to talk because you must understand that right now, 
you got to be careful when you are part of a relationship or in a marriage or in a union and somebody in that marriage is a trendsetter. Come on. You, 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 you got to be careful about the spirit of disagreement coming in when God is about to use your marriage or mm -hmm. use your agreement yes. to break tradition. Come on. Because, because this is what was going on. They were so upset at the fact that ain't nobody named Zachary, ain't nobody named John in the family. How, mm -hmm. how, how in the world <laughs> could you name him John? He need to be named like his daddy. We only birth Zacharias. We only, we, we, we only start businesses. We, 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 we only sell houses. We, yeah. we, only, we only preach. We, we only, and, and, and some of us are, 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 are in those type of family lineages where, where we only. Where, where th this is all we ever knew. This is all we ever did. This is all we ever uh, um, 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 was open to do. And now God's coming and he's doing something different. And now you have people in the family that's trying to cause you to stay in the mold of what everybody else has always done. Mm -hmm. When God has said, I'm trying to call you out of that. Do you know how hard it is to be in a relationship with somebody that is a traditional breaker? Mm -hmm. And then your spouse or your loved one or your significant other want to stay within the guidelines. Yeah. Do you know how it's already hard to be somebody that goes against the grain anyway, mm -hmm. but it's even more hard to go against the grain and not have no agreement, yeah. not have nobody holding your back, not having nobody holding you down. Can I tell you uh, 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 for, for those and this is not for everybody, but for some of you, you know, you are in relationship with risk takers. You know, you are in relationship with people that that are game changers mm -hmm. you know you are in relationship with people that do not know how to stay in the boat that do not know how to think outside that they do not have yes. know how to stay in the box but they have to go outside of the box they have to try something different and do you know how discouraging you can be to that relationship uh, or to your own relationship because God is trying to use that man or that woman to break the mold and you yes. trying to keep them stuck mm -hmm. the the devil is a liar. Yes. I come to tell you once again, if you do not understand and if you cannot handle, that might not, now I'm not trying to break a relationship up, but I'm talking about when you are in the infancy of your marriage or you're, or, or you're courting somebody, or you're dating somebody, you got to understand who you are married to Amen. or who you're trying to get into covenant with or who you're trying to get into a relationship with because you might be in a relationship with somebody that's a risk taker and you still trying to live by all the rules. But I come to tell you that every now and again, baby, you got to be willing to break the rules. You got to be willing to get out of your comfort zone. Yes. You got to be willing to try something different because your marriage ain't going to work. Your union ain't going to work when you want to do everything that, yes. that, that, that is the way your mama did it mm -hmm. and the way your daddy did it. Mm -hmm. Well, God didn't. You ain't married to your mama. You come ain't on. married to your daddy. You married to a game changer. You're on. married to somebody that's carrying the Holy Ghost. Yes, God inside of them. I need somebody to open up their mouth if you need God to break the limits off of your marriage. Yes, if you need God. God to break the limits off of your expectations. Hallelujah. If you need God to break some limits. I come to preach before I leave and tell somebody what God is trying to do through your relationship. Yes, God. It is not traditional. It will break the mold. Oh, my God, my God, my God. You better open your mouth and let God break. You better open your mouth and let God begin to take the limits off. Yes, God. Oh, my God, shut up. Take the limits off of their faith. Take the limits off of their money. Yes. Take the limits off of their ideas. Lord. Take the limits off of their business. Yes, Take God. the limits yes, off of yes, their yes, marriage. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Somebody put on the ball. Take the limits off. Thank you, oh God. Hallelujah. Hey. You in relationship you, with a God. cycle breaker. Yes, yes. yes. Oh, y'all missed that right there. I say you in relationship with a cycle breaker. Yes, God. Oh, my yes. God, my God. I'm talking Hallelujah. to cycle breakers that say, I'm going to be the one in the marriage. Yes. Come on. That's going to break the cycle. Yes, God. My God, my God. Come on, let's wrap this thing up. <laughs> I could I could go. You told me you ain't you told me you don't, don't go two hours, so <laughs> Well that is all he got. That is all we got for today. The only other thing we talked about was when Zachariah 
finally was able to open his mouth, all he could do was praise. All he could do was speak life into what his child was about to do. Yeah. All he could do was thank God for the great thing that was just birthed out of their agreement. All he could do was praise. So when God opens your mouth after that agreement, all you have to do is give him praise because the work is already done. You didn't have to say anything. You didn't have to do anything. God just said, sit down, shut up and wait for me to birth this miracle into this agreement. Wait for me to do something that's going to blow your mind. Yes. Wait for me to do something that you can't fathom, that you can't imagine. They could have never spoke that they would birth a seed that would come before Christ, that would speak of Christ, that would die for Christ. Hey. They could never have spoken that. So when it's time to birth something out, just lift your hands and give God a praise in this thing. When it's time for something to be birthed and your agreement, just praise God like now never before speak life into your seed speak life into what you have just birthed through your agreement speak life into your union praise god for your partner praise god for your marriage praise god for your spouse come on praise god like never before because god has used your union your agreement to birth something new into hey. your land to birth something new into your church to birth something new into your family. To break chains. Chains were broken with John. John was born filled with the Holy Spirit. That wasn't done prior to their agreement. That wasn't done on earth in man Come on. prior to Preach. John. But guess what? When Zechariah saw what God had done, what God had made in their agreement, all he could do was give God thanks. All he could do was bless God's name because there's nothing left to say once the agreement has been settled. There's nothing left to do once God has fixed that union. Yeah. Give God praise for the union in your life. Give God praise for the agreement resting in your spirit. Give God praise for the word, for the angels that have come down to you and gave you a word about your agreement, gave you a word about your union, gave you a word about your spouse. There's no work to do. Come on. Just give God praise. There's nothing left for you to say. Just give God praise. There's nothing left for you to hear. Just give God a praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory oh. to your name, God. Hallelujah. Yes, God, hallelujah. You're worthy, oh God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. And this is the power of agreement. Yes, God. This hallelujah. is the power of agreement. Yes, God. Hallelujah. There's manifestation in your agreement. Yes, God. There's healing. In your agreement, oh, your name, God. there's deliverance in your Thank agreement, you, oh God. there's power hey, in God. your He's agreement, yes, there's God. fight Hallelujah. in your yes, agreement, God. Hallelujah. Woo. Oh, oh, your name, God. Thank you for the agreement, oh God. He cut it all. I come to tell a couple, yes, God. I come to tell a marriage, yes, I God. come to tell a spouse. You better learn to agree again. Yes, yes, yes. You better get back into agreement. Yes. I don't care how unsaved he is. I don't care how unsaved she is. Yes. If you would agree, God would manifest something right yes, in your house. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say yes. Yes. Hallelujah. Yes, God. Hallelujah. My God. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Thank you, oh God. Glory to your name, I oh wish God. somebody would catch it. Yes, yes, There's yes. agreement in the atmosphere. Yes, God. I wish somebody would catch it. There's agreement in the heavenly. Yes, God. That's waiting for somebody to say, I'm snatching it. Yes, I'm taking God. my family back. I'm taking my children yes, back. Yes, yes. I'm taking my house back. Yes. I refuse for the devil. To come into my marriage yes. and snatch my agreement. Come on. The devil is a liar. We made vows for this. Yes. We got into covenant for this. Oh my gosh, your name, Let God. no Hallelujah. man put asunder what God has put together. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Two are better than one. Oh God. 
A threefold cord is not easily broken. Oh, How can two work that. together unless they agree? It's time to agree, church. Yes, God. Hallelujah. Hey. Thank you, oh God. My God. Glory to your name, God. Thank you, God. My God. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you. Hallelujah. I'm going to ask you. Um, I want you to pray. I want you to pray over some couples. I want you to pray over marriages. I want you to pray over those that are watching tonight. Because we're believing that God is about to bring relationships back into agreement. Yes. We thank you, oh God, for your word, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for everything, oh God, that you have spoken hey. on this evening, oh God. God, we thank you, oh God, for every agreement, oh God, that was attached to this word, oh God. God, we call forth agreement, oh God, in your Holy Spirit, oh God. God, we call down agreement, oh God, for every marriage, oh God, attached yes. to this line, oh God, for every relationship, oh God, for every engagement, oh God. We call down agreement, oh God, yes, with your word, oh yes, God, Lord. with what you have spoken, oh God, over every union, oh God. God, we thank you, oh God, for agreement, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for placing people, oh God, together, oh God, that are going to build your kingdom, oh God, that are going to break barriers, oh God, that are going to break chains, yes, that is going to break tradition, oh yes, God, Lord. and that is going to set fire, oh God, to Do your it, kingdom, oh God. Oh God. To your word, oh God, it, like oh God. never before, oh God. God, we ask you to touch, oh God, every Jane breaker, oh God, yes, every generational yes, curse Lord. breaker, oh God, every breaker, oh God, of tradition, oh God, of religion, oh yes, God. Lord. We ask that you go down, come down, oh God, and touch every marriage, oh God, yes, like Lord. never before, oh God. Do it, oh God. Us up, oh God, like never before, oh God. God, send your Do angels, it. oh God, to give a fresh word, oh God, to revive us, oh God, to renew us, oh God. Yes, God, Lord. we thank you, oh God, for holy covenant. It, oh God, we thank you, oh God, for holy agreement, oh God. We thank you, oh God, for holy relationship, oh God. We bless and magnify your name, oh God. We rebuke anything, oh God, from the yes, enemy, Lord. oh God, yes, that is going to try to break up marriages, that is going to try to break up relationships, that is going to try to break up what you have put together, oh God. Is, and God, we call it done in the name of Jesus. We call marriages healed in the name of Jesus. We call marriages delivered, oh God. We call spouses saved in the name of Jesus, oh God. Anything that doesn't line up with you, God. Yes, God, come down, oh God. Rain on every marriage, oh God. Rain on every marriage, oh God. Rain on every marriage, oh God. Send your warring angels on our behalf, oh God. In the name of 
be the center of it all, oh God. We say yes, oh God, for you to surround us and cover us like never before, oh God. And God, we just thank you, oh God, for your word, oh God. We thank you, oh God. You get all the glory. You get all the honor. You get all the glory. You get all the honor, oh God. You get all the glory, oh God. You get all the honor, oh God. We thank you, oh God. We glorify and magnify your name, oh God. God, we ask you to cover, oh God, your word, oh God. Cover your people, oh God. Cover your marriages, oh God. Yes, Lord. In the name of Jesus, oh God. We thank you, oh God. Thank you, we bless you, oh God. We honor you, oh God. God, be with us, oh God. Sleep with us, so rest yes, with us, Lord. oh God. Yes, Lord. God, give us, oh God, a fresh window, God, a fresh word, oh God, like never before for each and every individual union on this line, oh God. Renew us, oh God, refresh, restore, oh God, revive, oh God. Any dead thing in any union, oh God, we ask that you bring it back to life, oh God. We ask that you revive love, oh God. We ask that you revive kindness, oh God. We ask yes. that you revive revive joy oh god we ask that you revive peace oh god we rebuke any chaotic in marriage the in the name jesus. of jesus devil you must remove your hand off of every marriage of in the name of jesus that god has put together oh god and god we thank you oh god for coming in and reviving and restoring oh god in the name of jesus we give you all the glory all the honor and all the praise oh god amen Amen. Amen. Thank you, oh God. Amen. Amen. Glory to your name, Hallelujah. God. Hallelujah. The Lord is good. The Lord's been kind Hallelujah. to us. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. There's actually more. There's a lot more we could have said tonight that we didn't go into. Um, there's some other portions of marital agreement that we wanted to talk about tonight, um, but we knew based off of the time we weren't going to be able to do so so I'm asking that if you would like a part two because I just feel this I feel that this bless someone tonight if you would like a part two let me see you put that on the on the screen let me see you put that on the board if you would like a part two where we can deal with some more things and some more topics as it is regarding marriage I would like you to let us know uh, so that way we can prepare to do that sometime this month. Hallelujah. Um, however, on next week, on next week, we have none other than my bishop that is going to be with us, none other than Bishop Anthony Cease. It is going to be straight pandemonium in here. I'm going to try to behave. I'm going to try to be good. But I just believe that, that there is a word from the Lord. And me and Bishop Cease will be discussing uh, father and son agreement or spiritual parent agreement. And we're going to talk about how to have agreement even with your father ministry. Uh, whether you're a male, whether you're a woman. Uh, we're going to talk about having agreement with your spiritual parent and we're going to talk about what that looks like and we're going to talk about how that how, how that uh works within the body of christ so you do not want to miss next week i'm asking that if you were blessed by tonight i'm asking that you will sow a seed into this ministry so that we can continue to release the word of god in the fashion that we're doing so you can do that at, at via cash app dollar sign dlw ministries Dollar sign DLW Ministries via Cash App. I'm telling you, did my wife preach tonight? <laughs> my God, let, let me let me. She 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 worked. She worked. Okay, I hear I hear part two. So we going we gonna find the time for a part two. We gonna find the time for a part two. My wife preached. My wife preached tonight. I am so godly proud, and I can't wait to come back for part two. Thank you so much. Thank for supporting you. us thank you so much uh for those that watch and thank you so much for those that are going to be watching the replay we love you we celebrate you and i can't wait to see you next week i pray that god shines upon you i pray that the blessing of the lord that make it rich and add no sorrows be upon your life and we give god praise and honor have a great night we love you god bless you